Thank you very much. Uh, my, we, I was with, involved in the technology strand, and uh, as you can see, we have a lot of notes, uh, but we have only five minutes. Um, I think La Lambert set the stage, uh, saying that it could be a forward-looking debate, and it was uh, very much deeply into into lots of discussions. Um, we had three speakers. Uh, so Patrick, the main thing which he from Ericsson, what he said was basically that digital identity uh, is not yet developed, and that certainly impacts uh, so many domains which are in the in the report itself. So, for example, healthcare and so on and so forth. That's because identity is fragmented, we can't achieve the goals as we set out in the report. Um, the other interesting thing from his talk was about um, the potential decoupling of value creation and job creation. In other words, that we are creating a lot of value, uh, but not enough, uh, is not reflected in the employment in exactly the same way. In other words, he, he had this thing of where do you go when you leave your office uh, in 2030. Um, and that, that's a profound question. Um, Matthias from, uh, from Bertelman, he talked about the Tolino platform, which is uh, the, the, the new open uh, cloud-based platform, the future of, uh, future of um, consum consuming content on the web, uh, on, on devices. Um, and also talked about various things uh, which could change uh, in the industry, the book industry as well, streaming models will come in the book industry and so on and so forth. So a lot of uh, innovation, a lot of disruption in that way. Uh, John Finney uh, from O3B, very interesting talk in very, very many dimensions, uh, talked about the freedom of the web, much similar to, to my personal ethos, um, and also about the satellite industry from where he, where he comes from. Uh, and the key uh, aspect of some of his talk was about no one in the room has grown up collaborating uh, through the web. So uh, we are all kind of preaching to a generation uh, which is behaving very differently. Um, and the key aspect which, which was there was that emerging markets um, have the capacity to peer uh, and that will be totally transformational. Uh, but at the moment that capacity to peer is limited because uh, of the sort of uh, lag in internet penetration. Uh, but presumably that will, uh, that will be overcome and, and, and 2030 perhaps if that is overcome then the emerging markets would be a, a dynamic force to play with. Uh, then we had two rounds of um, discussions um, and feedback and uh, again, I, I, I pick up some th themes from there. Um, first one was that uh, Jürgen, who was from DG Connect, was in the main member of the audience and had some very interesting uh, discussions. The one of them was about um, the in the ICT industry has grown three percent even in crisis, which means that even no matter what happens, we will see, face a job uh, shortage. Nine hundred thousand is what he what he what he said, um, and about also the the grand coalition and digital skills and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing was Lambert talked about what is happening in China and, and Korea and, and what it would mean. Uh, we talked about, uh, for some reason, we talked about skills and education a lot more. Uh, was not exactly the, 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 the theme, but it, it seemed to resonate with a whole bunch of people. Um, universities, what is not the biggest university, what is the best university, uh, and also the rate of change of skills. For example, if you had a surgeon who was, <clears throat> if, you, if you went to a surgeon, you wanted to look at some Somebody, this was John's comment that he wanted to say, look at somebody very old, but uh, if you went to the ICT industry, that, that age didn't matter because every six months the, the industry was dramatically reformed. And the, the, perhaps the ability to, to learn is, is, is a very important skill uh, not being quite addressed uh, in, in our discussion. And the last few points were again a lot of discussions around around uh, from the audience. Uh, one was about um, innovation has cycles, so innovation cannot be planned by politicians, uh, which was uh, a strong message being being sent. Um, and that therefore cycles are, are very important. Even Apple today has 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 a perhaps on a, a downward cycle. Really, uh, last two comments which I found extremely interesting. There was a paper published in 1988. I think Jürgen said that. I don't know. And that paper. Uh, made Made no mention of mobile phones as innovations because at that time uh, the future of innovation was, was still coming. Mobile phones were not there. 88, they were just on the cusp of innovation. Uh, but this innovation paper written in 88 said nothing about mobile phones. And the final thought I thought was very interesting was this idea that um, if you had iPads, um, you could learn faster because you, you don't have to worry about handwriting. 
uh, which was I think I was, I was a profound statement. I thought it was quite interesting, uh, and that we shouldn't we shouldn't judge uh, the next generation uh, just because on our own basis. And finally, Rwanda and Estonia were said in the same context, uh, which was very surprising for me because I've known a lot about Estonia. Apparently, Rwanda in Africa is doing something very interesting, uh, which I was not aware of. Was said by I believe a member of the audience. I don't know if you are here. Uh, the same person who talked about uh, innovation cannot be planned by politicians. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. That's, that's, the, that's the summary of what we had here. Yeah.